Back to our story now on Apple versus the U.S. government. Uh, here to give us an idea of the precedent which could be set if Apple meets the government's demands to create a backdoor to devices it's, it wants to crack open. In this case, uh, it's the shooter in the San Bernardino massacre. Uh, Mark Rosenberg, executive director of the Electronic Privacy Information Center, joins us now live to talk about this. Now, Mark, the the government wants uh, this device that the government that that the um, the Justice Department has in its possession to be open to to uh, being cracked by by them to to get information on this shooter. Doesn't Apple seem a bit unsympathetic to the cause by stating that we'll never allow the governments to access our information at all? Well, I don't think Apple is unsympathetic. In fact, I think they've expressed a great deal of concern for the tragedy in San Bernardino. I think there's also clearly support for the FBI's important mission to protect public safety. I think the real uh, debate here is about the security and privacy of a device that's used by tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people around the world, which is the Apple iPhone. And you see, the problem uh, for Apple is that if it goes along with the FBI's approach, which is to make the device easier to crack uh, in the context of a criminal investigation, it also becomes easier to crack in many other settings, including, of course, espionage and cybercrime and criminal hacking. So I think here, actually, um, Tim Cook has, has taken the right position. It's not that they haven't been uh, cooperative. Uh, Apple has provided uh, information to the FBI in support of their investigations. But this is unprecedented in terms of what the FBI is, is asking for, and I think that's the reason that Apple is pushing back. Well, we've heard a lot of talk about foreign governments trying to take advantage of this if Apple were to somehow cooperate in this instance. I mean, how widespread could that be if Apple caves and goes along with something like this? I mean, is it saying essentially it's got a responsibility to the entire industry? Well, I think it's a problem on multiple levels. I mean, I think obviously it's a problem if you're a leading uh, provider of a, of a popular consumer product. You need uh, the trust and the confidence of your customers that your product will provide the privacy and security they expect. Uh, that's a very practical business issue. But I think uh, for Tim Cook, it's also a fundamental rights issue. It's a human rights issue. I mean, if you believe that privacy is important and, and valuable and worth protecting, then you have to be concerned about any government uh, that's seeking to gain access to private communications. So I think, uh, you know, part of what's going on here can be explained as a business judgment, but I think there's more. I think there's a genuine belief that privacy is very important today uh, to users of new communication services, and it needs to be safeguarded. So essentially what Tim Cook is saying is that if it's possible for Apple to hand over information from a device, if it's, if it's being, you know, subpoenaed, et cetera, then it'll be easier for other people to hack into that if Apple can do it. Is that what Apple is saying? Well, just to be a little bit more precise, I think what Apple is saying, which is probably the position of most companies, is that if we have evidence that's relative to your investigation in our possession, and you come to us with a lawful process, which is a search warrant or subpoena, we will comply because we understand that's our obligation. But the second part of this is, is Apple saying, but we're not going to design our devices so that they're easier to crack, so that you can get access to them uh, in certain circumstances, because that creates a risk for everybody. So it's important, I think, to distinguish between the types of uh, cooperation that is appropriate in a proper, well-defined criminal investigation and the type of uh, efforts by governments to gain access to much broader control over technologies that do pose uh, risks to privacy and, and security. All right. Thank you very much for joining us today. Mark Rotenberg, Executive Director of the Electronic Privacy Information Center.